This week on The Clinic, you met John Rogers. John and his wife moved to Phoenix to start a new life. They were getting to the point where it was hard to manage the horses and the Marlboro Man lifestyle no longer appealed. And they wanted to do something different. So they moved from Tucson to Phoenix. And like many, many people before them, when they got up here, they found out that all John's health problems followed them here. John has a condition called spinal stenosis. He's also dealing with normal pressure hydrocephalus, but today we're gonna to really focus on the spinal stenosis. So for those of you at home, the question is, what does spinal stenosis feel like? Or in other words, how do you really know if you have spinal stenosis? And the answer is a combination of two things. The first thing is your symptoms. Spinal stenosis causes three symptoms. Number one, pain radiating down your legs with walking. That pain feels like electricity to most people. To others, it's a sense of heaviness. You know you have spinal stenosis if you're in the grocery store and you start feeling your legs go weak. You lean over the shopping cart and the pain just goes away and you can walk as long as you want. If you're not in the grocery store and you don't have something to lean over, you just sit down. So pain in your legs that's relieved by bending is something doctors call claudication. And claudication is the first symptom of spinal stenosis. Number two, nerve root pain. The narrowing that happens in the spinal canal affects not just the nerves in the canal, but the individual nerve roots as they go through a passage called the foramen and leave the spine. Neural foraminal narrowing, or what some people call lateral recess stenosis, causes pain in the distribution of a nerve root. If you crimp a nerve root or inflame a nerve root, you get problems with the things that that nerve root normally does. And nerve roots normally do three things. They have motor function, sensory function, and reflex function. So if spinal stenosis is pinching a nerve root, you could get, if it's the L5 nerve root, the one that bends the big toe and the ankle upward, you get weakness of the ankle. You can't walk on your heels with your toes in the air. And if your doctor examines you and puts pressure on your big toe, he pushes it, they push it right down. You can barely pull it up. Motor. Sensory is numbness in the area that the nerve root serves. So let's say we're talking about the L4 nerve root. The sensory area for that root is the inside ankle, the bump on the inside ankle. If you scratch along your inside ankle and one is numb and the other is not, that's a sensory problem with the L4 nerve root. And then the third thing is the reflex. When you go to your doctor and, he, and they tap on your patellar, your kneecap and your leg moves, that's the L3 nerve root showing a reflex. So. The first sign of spinal stenosis, first symptom is claudication, pain shooting down your leg when you walk. The second one is nerve root dysfunction, motor, sensory, or reflex changes. What's the third one? The third one is back pain. We don't totally understand why, but if you have central spinal stenosis or even neuroforaminal or lateral recess stenosis, you can get an achy pain in the back and it's not really much different from the pain you get from a sore joint in the back. So those are the big three that let you know what, what does it feel like to have spinal stenosis. You have pain down your legs when you walk that it's relieved by bending. You have nerve root dysfunction if a motor sensory reflex changes, if a nerve root is being pinched, and you may or may not have back pain. That's what it feels like. Here's the problem. All of those things happen in other conditions, right? Back pain happens if you have a sore joint. Pain down your leg happens if your arteries are clogged. There's something called vascular claudication. Feels exactly like your spinal canal is too narrow. And nerve root problems can happen from a herniated disc. So how do those symptoms tell you if you have spinal stenosis? They don't. What tells you if you have spinal stenosis is symptoms like that that persist for more than six to 12 weeks that, that despite conservative measures, lead to magnetic resonance imaging. An MRI scan of your back is the definitive 
test to find out if you have spinal stenosis. And then the reverse is also true. If you had an MRI and it doesn't show spinal stenosis, you don't have it. If you have an MRI and it shows spinal stenosis, that's how you know. For more information on spinal stenosis, check out our website, phoenixspineandjoint.com, spine, spinal stenosis. There's video explanation that goes into greater detail about the causes, treatments, and details of spinal stenosis. Also, if you miss John and his wife on our YouTube channel, The Clinic, come check it out. It really helps to see what someone else is going through, to share their experience, and find out what's the next step for you if you have spinal stenosis. Thank you.